Hello, in this video I'm going to teach you how to find the modulus as well as the argument of a complex number and I'll timestamp the parts of the video below. So this is a really useful thing to be able to do because it allows us to represent complex numbers in other ways than just a plus bi. Okay, So let's see how we can find both the modulus and the argument. So say we have a generic complex number z that is equal to a plus bi. And in this example, a and b are positive. So we could represent that on our argand diagram like this. Okay, So z could be equal to a plus bi. And so this would be a and this would be b. And so the vector of this complex number would be something like that. So the modulus of the complex number is just its size. okay, And that is just the same as the length of this vector here. And so we represent that with the modulus bars, okay, z. So the modulus of z is written like this. And that is equal to this length of that vector. Now we could find that using Pythagoras because if we draw a line down here, well, we know the distance or the size of that line is going to be b. And we know the distance from the origin to the point a is just a. And so this creates a right angle triangle. And we can use Pythagoras to find the size of or the modulus of the complex number z. And so we can do that by taking the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that's pretty easy. The argument of the complex number, that's the size of the angle from the positive real axis. Okay, And so if our complex number is above the positive real axis, then we measure it anti-clockwise going round. Okay? And if it's below the positive or below the real axis, we measure it clockwise going round and it's going to be a negative size. And so I'll show you what I mean by that in the examples next. But for this complex number z, we measure it anti-clockwise round from the positive real axis. So it's going to be round like this. And the size of that angle, say theta, that is my argument. And we write it like this. The arg of z is the argument of z. And so for that specific example here, we could find it by doing inverse tan because we've got the opposite and the adjacent. And so that could be given by inverse tan of the opposite side, so b, over the adjacent side, a. OK, so let me look, show you a couple of examples that will kind of demonstrate this maybe a bit easier. So the first one, let me get rid of this for now. So we want to find the modulus and argument of the complex number Z1, which equals 3 plus 4i. So let me first mark it on onto my argand diagram. So 3 plus 4i, that's going to be this number here. So that's my Z1. And let me draw it on as a vector here. So this length of this vector, OK, is the modulus of my complex number. And so the modulus of Z1, that's going to be given by the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. So let me write that on 3 squared plus 4 squared. OK, and for these calculations, I would always recommend drawing on an argand diagram with the complex numbers because it just makes it a lot easier. So the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared is the same as the square root of 25. And so our answer is going to be 5 or our modulus is 5. And we're going to take the positive root because we're dealing with a size or a length, so we're not interested in it being negative. Now for the argument, so arg of the complex number z1, again, we've got the opposite side. In fact, I can write these on. We've got the opposite side length, which is going to be 4, and the adjacent side length, which is 3, and we want this angle here, theta. So we're going to do inverse tan of 4 over 3. And when we're cut, whoops, of 4 over 3. And when we're taking the argument, we're going to be interested in doing it in radians, not in degrees. So we're doing inverse tan of 4 over 3. And that gives me an argument of 0 0.927 to three decimal places. And so that would be the modulus and argument of Z1. Let's now look at a different example where we've got to find the modulus and argument of Z2, which is negative 3 subtract 4i. So let me first map that on. So it's negative 3 minus 4i. So that's going to be here on our argand diagram. And let me draw on the vector 2. So length of this vector is going to be my uh, modulus, so modulus of z2. And that's going to be equal to, let's draw it, the square root of negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared, which you might notice is the exact same as the above example, and so it's going to be 5. Now the point where this one differs is the argument is going to be slightly different to calculate. Okay, So the argument of z2. Now remember what I said, if it's below the real axis, we're going to go clockwise around like this. And this is the argument, this angle here, and it's going to be negative. Okay, And the way we can find this is by finding the size of this small angle here and subtracting it from pi radians. Okay, Because angles on a straight line add up to, well, in this case, pi radians. And so if I do the green angle plus the red angle, that's going to equal pi. And so if I find the red angle and subtract it from pi, that leaves me with the green angle. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me mark on the side length. So we've got this side here is 
negative four, but we're dealing with sizes of le um, lengths of sides, so that's gonna just be four, and this side here is gonna be three. And so the argument of Z2 is gonna be pi, okay? Or let's do it bit by bit. So we can find the size of the red angle, theta, by doing tan inverse of four over three, which is the same as above, so that's 0 0.927. And so the green angle size is gonna be pi subtract 0 0.927. So let me work that out on my calculator, and that's gonna be equal to 2.21, say four to three decimal places. But remember what I said, it's negative if it's below the uh, positive real axis, or the real axis. And so the argument of Z is negative 2.214, and that is the argument. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe, and share, and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.